Well, you're internal. You don't want that. Calm down, Emily. <laughs> Calm down. Okay, yeah, Everything's going to well, be okay. I can't watch okay, we, we are live right here at the KMAC with the lovely and talented Emily DeGenis. Hi, Emily. Hi, Tara. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. We also have Aldi Milliken and Curtis Conlon, Conlon yeah. with us. Two gentlemen who are very, very important. <laughs> very <laughs> important. <laughs> here Thank at the KMAC, the Kentucky Museum. K no, just KMAC. KMAC. KMAC Museum. What we'll is what they else. used to stand for? Doesn't. It's only a contemporary art museum. Yep. <laughs> we can talk about that for hours. Clever. <laughs> yeah. It's called rebranding at its very best. It's, it's like it's Nike. Like the J. What does Nike mean? You know what I mean? Actually, there is a green. Means a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it means a lot of money for Beaverton, Oregon. That's what That's Nike true. means. Well, we're bringing a lot of money to. Kentucky, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, I'm so grateful that I'm here, and thank you guys for not stepping on my mic cords, because and stop playing with that. She has the worst habit <laughs> I'm of playing. Here, with let this. me move this oh, up a little okay. bit. Okay. She has the worst habit I of playing with her, her microphone before cords. I came on that I would be a problem. Yeah, she is a problem. So but is, that's why I love the, her, and that's why speaking. <laughs> that's why I have her on, on my show <laughs> because <laughs> she I should like sit on my hands because she I, has no filters. That's no. the best part about Emily DeGenis is that the filters just don't operate, and that's what makes She's her authentic. charming. She's authentic. Yeah. It's what makes her charming. <laughs> my mother, my mother would disagree. Hi, Mom. Yeah. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hey, Mom. I spent the best Thanksgiving with your mom. She was the most awesome, wonderful, exciting, There's someone right here. Thank you. happy, dynamic woman. And I want to I want to wish her the best. She's having a little surgery tomorrow. She is. Mm -hmm. Me? Keep her in her play prayers. Neck. 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 Okay. God, neck wow. is just mm. like, yeah, one of those things and that she's you just, a trooper. You just Good. feel all the time. Yes, I told her she has to get better so that we can start, you know, she's definitely got to get the better. Because you and I are going to have coffee, girlfriend. <laughs> we had so much fun at Thanksgiving. You were flitting around doing your thing. Your mom and I were over there in the I, corner. I do flit. Just, yes. just, just having chatting. a good time. <laughs> so the, po the point of this whole effort that we have going here is, number one, we wanted to come to the KMAC because it's such an absolutely beautiful place and they're, they're moving in an art installation behind us, which is why we wanted to be out here in the middle of all the fun. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of wanted to catch up with Emily because, we, frankly, we used to see each other all the time because she stalked me the entire time did. that we were doing the campaign and I was going to all these events and everywhere I went, there she was mm -hmm. in her yellow t-shirt. Sadly, yes. <laughs> <It's> tireless. <laughs> tireless. She's and tireless. so I've been, I've been miss, missing being stalked. <laughs> <laughs> since yes. the election. You know, it's so funny people would be like, oh my God, I saw you everywhere. And I thought, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, it was awesome. You were everywhere. Yeah, you were. I'm just going to tell cool. you right now, you, you you are an, a, an everywhere kind of gal. And I was amazed at how many different places and how many different people you touched. And I know that I think we had, you said something like 200,000 people voted in that judicial election. Mm. Yes, it was. And you missed was by a land half a percent or something. Something like that. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, I mean, it was like under yeah. 2,000 votes. I, I believe so. I the fact that you can get 200,000 people to vote, number one, right. Right, is In incredible. Yeah. But the right. fact that you can get all but 2,000 2, of those or less to vote for you, yes. That's and you've never run for anything before, maybe P yeah. P PTA president or something. No, not, no? Even PTA. not even PTA. No, but I've never run in political office. No school district stuff. No school district stuff. My parents are not in politics. I don't have family members. So it was. I was. Yeah, very unorthodox, <laughs> crazy. Uh, uh, you know, candidate, and it was. It was very cool for me because you know my parents are immigrants to this country, and so to be a first generation. American and kind of exercising that right was very cool. Yeah, uh, very cool. And Absolutely. So I did look at it not necessarily as a loss, but um, obviously it was a loss, but but more about the fact that I was able to engage people to care about voting for judicial office. So that, that was, was a privilege. Thing. That was really great. And I, I had to. I stood on the shoulders of many people, like Curtis <laughs> and Chris, Curtis Collin and Chris Wells, for instance, who put a huge sticker on the back of their car for almost 15 months and would curse me on a daily basis when it rained. It distracted and our driving for <laughs> 11 months. And showed up at all the fundraisers. And exactly. It didn't make their car and noticeable. Yes. Did. Really, yes. Yes. You know, for targeting for eggs. You see Chris and drive. Yeah. You, sure you stay clear. And people like you, Tara, who would like proliferate my message and, and just you know, my Sounds family, like something my husband. Nuclear. It was yeah. inspiration. I was, I was, I was a force to be reckoned. You were, and you well, 
are. Yeah, so can I ask a question? Like, because we were at, we were wondering about this the other day. Yeah. Like, what does it what does it take to be a judge? Like, what does it take? Why, why, why do it? And then what does 2, it take? Two thousand more votes. Is that what it is? Because <laughs> that's what it takes. Like, do you need it? Because you're you're an attorney. A black you're lawyer. an attorney. Because yeah. my, my wife was like, no, you have to be an attorney to you run do. for judge. You, you do. do. You do. Because that was what I was wondering. You do okay. have to be an attorney. Okay. You have to be practicing. You know, for certain levels of, okay. of court. But for family court that I was running for, you have to be practicing for at least eight years in the state of Kentucky. Okay. And so there is more than just like you can put your name on a voting. You, you know, can't just paper. pass the bar and sign up. Is what okay. you're saying. All right. right. That's cool. And, and okay. Yeah. So, you know, and there are minimum qualifications, mm -hmm. and, you know, there could have been argued about that all day long. But yes, you do have to be an attorney in order okay. to run. Okay, that's for good to know. The judicial bench. Okay, and great. every level of the judicial bench. Yeah, because you're interpreting the law, so it would be very helpful to well, know <laughs> something about the law. I mean, you don't, I mean what, what are the criteria for being a president? I mean, obviously the bar is pretty low, right? Yes. So, um, so. I have no comment on that. I went on a nonpartisan law. It's pronounced Kamala. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all I have to say. I am so excited about that. Oh, my. I know, isn't that? funny I've already I've already jumped on that bandwagon from the very beginning but um, so so basically you know what we have is the opportunity to deconstruct uh, a judicial campaign and that's what we want to do but first we're going to pay a little bit of attention to this beautiful place of which you are on the board of directors of, 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 of Couture. 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 So, yes. so tell me what that is Aldi because you're, you're the, the chief Curtis uh, and then we're going to have Curtis. Well I, yeah, yeah we can both, we'll both uh, Curtis will chime in. Kmet Couture is a fashion show a fashion event um, it's another program that connects people to art and creative practice. So it's mission specific and it is a fundraiser that helps us do our programming year round. So uh, it's a way for us to activate artists. Uh, we, we have a, um, a curatorial statement. We have education programs. Uh, we have artists submitting to the museum and then, we, and then our curators uh, call over a lot of the pieces to produce this incredible show that is ultimately a uh, uh, an intervention, a creative intervention on Main Street. Very cool. Yep, it's pretty that. awesome. It's high energy. Pretty exciting. So the actual event. Yes. Talk to us about the details. So it's a lot. It's a lot. It, it <laughs> actually has turned into a year-round program, but of course it all centers around one event. This year it's on Saturday, April twentieth. Okay. So two weeks before Derby, um, and we take up uh, all of Main Street between Seventh and Eighth Street um, and put up tents, white tents. So um, it's about 700 guests come in. Uh, that's an hour and a half of uh, cocktails from 7 to 8.30 and then they uh, go to another tent right connected to it for the runway show. And it's a runway show of wearable art. Uh, this year we have 61 garments in the show uh, representing 49 different artists. And um, they're all people that have been submitted and submitted their uh, idea for through sketch and uh, how it pertains to our curatorial statement. Um, this and is now, like a juried art show for oh, clothing. Oh, completely, it's, it's completely. Absolutely. I yeah. love it. It's pretty wild, and it's also like it really is this this like burst of energy. You know, the public is so like you're so close to the works, and there's so much energy on the on the um, runway that people are involved as much as the artists who have been working on these pieces. And it's just it's just it's pretty profound. Ultimately, we probably have a thousand people you know involved. We have the cool. volunteers, the designers, the stylists. The, the uh, all of the production staff, uh, wonderful people like Emily here, who are, who are volunteering their time to the museum, <laughs> offer this event, uh, and then and then the public who get to really be a part of something kind of amazing. And I know that a lot of people, at the end of it, are like, "Wow, I, I, I it, this was it was like almost outer body. Like that is the that is a feeling a lot of people have. And then for our young artists who we've mentored for the whole year, right. they understand what it means to be at a national level. Like they get something that that is so hard to teach That's amazing. you have to experience and that's what's, what's the age range of artists who are involved well our youngest artist we have this year is 14 and that oh is the God. youngest that is that's the amazing. absolute youngest yeah. you can be you have that's to be at least 14 brilliant. years of age and she's a freshman in high school um, at Where? KCD oh, okay. and cool. um, then uh, the oldest I I'm we have a few people in there. Stop counting over fifty. Sixties or seventies. <laughs> I mean, we do. Um, Let's not talk about. Yeah, age. there's, yeah. there's no. The only have, age requirement is that you must be fourteen years or older. And, so. and it's an incredibly diverse crowd. We've got, you know, so it's not your typical, not typical models. There's no typical being, right? We're, we want to represent all forms, all, all people, uh, gender identities, uh, races, groups, ages, whatever, male, female. 
and and that's what I think is is really caught the attention of like the mayor who loves this event and other people around around the city because it really does represent the best that we have to offer here. And I it's inclusive, that. like uh, what Aldi was saying. And by the way, kudos to Curtis who does yes. this amazing job. Curtis is, is awesome. Curtis, 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 like, is Curtis awesome. puts this all together. Oh, but, go on. But, oh, yes, I know. <laughs> no, I'll you say do, it. Go on. Go yeah. on. Stop about yourself. But yeah. um, and also that it's inclusive, which you know, you know, you go if you had the privilege, which I have not, to go to New York and see a runway show. Let's say, you know these. These dresses and the people that are there, it's its a very finite group of people. Here, it brings the city together. We celebrate art. We celebrate um, the, the inclusivity of this city. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's been a privilege to be on the board with for Couture. And I'm grateful yeah, that Curtis Yeah, and having Emily on the board is, on the committee is, is, is <laughs> Been a pain. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're lucky to have you on the committee. Thank so you. Caroline Knopp says, "Hi, I'm Caroline. watching." I love Laura Caroline. Malillo Barnum says, "Love this group." Love and we love you, Laura. Thank you. Laura. Hi, Laura. We love you too. <laughs> she Caroline. was awesome. And Laura says, "Who doesn't want to catch up with Emily?" Yeah. <laughs> um, Two thousand people. Oh, no. MG. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my friends Eric Cooper, Sadiqa Reynolds, Sheila Robbins, Bishop, Marlon Gaines. Um, Patty, uh, oh, Patty going on Fawn Almond. My God, I haven't seen you forever. Libby Patty. Parkinson, Vicki Petsy, Amy Dawson Ham, John Zidell, um, David and Janet Hedrick, Susanna Marie Schulte, Alan Miller, Debbie Gober. Hi, Deb. Chaz Rowe is watching. Debbie Hossman, Trish Walker, Keith Bernauer, Amy Dawson, Randy Metzger, and Don Birch, of course, of Quest Outdoors. Great sales. I just yeah. got something <laughs> oh, really wow. cool there. I got a scarf. I love it. Anyway, aside from <laughs> that, there are so many things at the KMAC to see. Are we calling it KMAC or the KMAC? It's just KMAC. <laughs> just like just See, KMAC. Aldi's gonna Facebook. It's Aldi's, Facebook. It's, it's I just, just Aldi's KMAC. gonna get it squared you away. Saw it, you saw it. <laughs> See, I'm catching on. Awesome. I'm catching on slowly. I can't wait to invite invite you back for the next uh, show. I I think. She should you know do a mean? podcast. I will live cast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll do one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'd, That'd be fun. so much That'd fun. Cool. Oh, you would love it. It's really cool. This weekend, I live casted from the Metastatic Breast Cancer Fundraiser. Good for you. Which was great because the guest of honor keynote speaker. Uh, had a recurrence and had to go into the hospital in Michigan mm -hmm. and she wasn't able to join us but oh, wow. she was because of the live cast able no, to be awesome. a part of it and yeah. we had her on video too cool. so and then on uh, Sunday night I live casted the Louisville Youth Choir fundraiser, oh, wow. which is oh, really good. wonderful. Okay. No child that? is, it's at the Olmstead. Oh, no wonderful. child will be refused the opportunity to learn to sing. Yeah as a result of this fundraiser. Great. So, Great. And I love to do these mm -hmm. things so and, and to catch up with folks and you know we're going to just kick you guys out now. That's all right. Okay. Great we, we talking are, to you. Thank you. Love you, you, you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Don't forget to take your mic and share we're, away. We're going to bow out. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. So good to see you. Curtis, see great you. to see you, too. You know, it's interesting because, yeah, there you go. Take your chair, Aldi. Take your chair, Take your chair. Follow oh, direction. Come on. <laughs> Clean it up. Take it away. So, um, hi. Hi. You know, there were so many fabulous women who ran from sea to shining sea. I know. As we have heard. What a, what a historic time to run. Right? I am telling you. Yes. You guys did such a fantastic job. Uh, first of all, we have to say hello to Tracy Davis. Um, she's her. nuttier than a fruitcake, <laughs> and the two of them drive me crazy, so I couldn't invite them to both be on the show or you wouldn't have been able to understand a thing. But Tracy, I will catch up with you, and we will do something else fun together. And I still owe you a birthday drink. Yes. Hot chocolate or Diet Coke is but all But there I was offer. Tracy Davis, Christina Garvey, Lori Goodwin, Lisa Lang. I mean, yep. it could go on and on and on. And they were fabulous people. And the best part was I got to interview all of you yes. on our judges panels yes. because I decided to devote a good portion of Take It From Tara in the spring and the fall to the judicial races because I felt like people just don't pay attention to that particular branch of government. And it's so critical that we understand it. Very. Especially very now. So. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, especially now, yes, but a lot of people would say to me on the campaign trail, well, I mean, I've never been in family court, or I've, this doesn't affect me. Yeah, and it does. And the answer is, <laughs> yes, it does, because, you know, family court deals with some of the most difficult, challenging issues facing families today, children, domestic violence victims, kids that are truant or habitually difficult to, to supervise. Right. I mean, a whole host of things, and so, even though you may be lucky and avoid family court unless you're adopting a child because that's the only highlight you know as far as that yeah. is concerned or, or good feeling um, it's important to know who is caretaking our community particularly for those most vulnerable yes and um, so I was really grateful 
to see so many people engaged this yes. this time mm -hmm. around in the judicial races. Yes. You know, win or lose, it was a win-win for for so many people in Louisville because so many people came out and supported uh, the, the, that particular race. Well, races, you know, rather. you've got people who go into um, a judicial race, and, and I want to just kind of, as I said, I want to deconstruct it because <laughs> I don't know that a lot of people know what's involved in running for office, but it's a living nightmare when you start to talk about it. Let's talk to a couple of other people, by the way, first. Uh, Ricky Wayne Burks, Max Ruda, Brian Steele, Maria Rodriguez says, I voted for you. Oh. Just went through family court for my grandchildren. It's so important. Yes. Brad Lady from Bridgehaven Mental Health Services, always checking in on me. He's our performance uh, quality he's so guy. He's lovely, yes. He's and nice he's, he wants to make sure that we're all performing at the best <laughs> of our ability. So here I am, Brad. Are we? Are performing. we performing? Alan we need to Miller, know. Fran Jasper. Hi, our, Fran. Our rug maven. She let me put a uh, lovely sign in front of her gorgeous store. She has the she most is such an amazing. Rugs. Yes. I love her. Love she, her she's too. very she's a big supporter of uh, many of the charities in Louisville, many of the nonprofits, and we appreciate you for that. Um, from the beginning, let's just literally start from the very beginning, as they say <laughs> in the sound of music. What's the first thing you have to do after you sign the little thing down at the courthouse that says I'm running for judge? Find a good therapist. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Uh, so for me, I was fortunate I'm somebody who asks a lot of questions so yes I went out because again I didn't know what I didn't know this is the first time that I've ever run and so you you start off by being smart enough I think to surround yourself with people who understand that political um, landscape better than I would and John so, Y the third was a good choice John, John Y Brown <laughs> he is just the classiest man Lisa and Siebert also Le a good yeah. one all of yep. them were fabulous, fabulous people. One person in particular, apart from my lovely husband, hi honey, hi honey, um, was um, you know Judge Tom McDonald. I, I had clerked for a couple of judges, um, and they were all instrumental in offering their you know experiences, their tidbits, their advice, their counsel. And so early on, I think it's important to be intentional in your campaign and who you surround yourself sure. with. Do you remember Bill Clinton saying he hired everybody who was smarter than him? Well, and that's what I did, absolutely. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that these wonderful people who were willing to put their reputations on the line for me, and that was what was so inspiring yeah. for me, was that you know, total strangers came yeah. out in, in full force. But to surround yourself with a great campaign team um, and then really be organized and intentional and understand for us it was the mission of under you know explaining why I was running right. and for somebody who really not a lot of people knew in the political landscape for instance it was imperative or incumbent on us to get out there so we had teams you were of out people. there Man. we did it was, that's it was why crazy. I asked it was you crazy. to do this deconstruction thing with me because honest to God I have never seen a candidate <laughs> in more places with more supporters, with more t-shirts, those bright yellow t-shirts, which really caught the eye. Thank you. Really, I mean, it was a beautiful thing to watch how people responded to that. And you know, that's what they say is, I think it's the yellow and the blue or the yellow and the black that are like the most See, visible that, colors. I have to profess ignorance because I didn't know. Well, I picked, my gosh. I picked they yellow because my daughter's favorite color is yellow, and I picked blue because my son's favorite color is So blue. it was dumb luck. Is so what it was you're just saying. dumb luck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But seriously, I mean, it was a very, very active and very visible campaign. And, and probably, so, yes. probably the most. I'm, I'm oh, just saying, well, thank you. from yes. a from a viewer's perspective, and you know, and, and we joke about you know seeing each other at all these events. I, you were at all the events that I was at. They weren't necessarily campaign events. They were nonprofit events. It was Pride. It was you know the mental health walk. It was all the different things that I normally do. And you were there, and you were doing your campaign thing, but you were also participatory in those events, which you know, which I appreciated. Oh. A lot of the judge candidates were. Yes. And I'm telling you, it, it impressed the hell out of me to see these people, both men and women, who were out campaigning uh, to be a judge, which I, I find odd anyway. I find it weird that you campaign to be a judge, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, but you, That's our system. That, that's right. the system. Right. But you had... Um, an incredible presence across the city for Thank how long? You. 15 months? 15 months about, wow. yeah. It was uh, a huge chunk of time, but you know, I think the, the reason we did that was because I wanted to earn people's not only respect, but their vote, and to make sure people understood that, you know, I was serious about this. This wasn't just some happenstance, oh, let me just throw my name into the hat. Sure. 
Um, and so that was important for me. Plus it was important for me, just like it is even when I'm not campaigning, to get out in the city and understand the needs of what's going on, you know, what's going on in, in different parts of the city. Because yes. sometimes we do tend to get isolated. And then, you know, I come from a very, very service-oriented family. So we, that's been instilled on us from day one, which yeah. is give back, be involved, you know, don't take things for granted. You know, you've, you were blessed with certain privileges of, of having a good family and love and support. Um, so give back to those who may not have that necessarily. So yeah, your mom and dad's stories that I, I've heard <laughs> were just phenomenal. Like my grandparents, you know, right, my right. grandparents were Irish immigrants who came to this country and my mother was a first generation American. Right. As you are. I am. And that was what was so uh, so amazing about talking to your mother and hearing her story. I would love to do a whole hour. Of, I could do oh, 10 she, hours of she conversation. She could do 10 hours. If she's fabulous. If you think I talk a lot, she's, she's <laughs> a great conversation. But this is what's cool is that they did instill in you and your brother and your, your other family members and now your grandchildren, the grandchildren in the family, I can see, who all adore their grandparents, Absolutely, are yes. getting that same kind of instruction which is, it's being of service to people. Yes. That's a really important part Yes, of and whether you're in politics or running in a campaign or not, you should always give back some way. Even right. if, you know, and, and you can do that in such a variety of ways. And I, that's what I learned about in the city was there is so much yes. to do and to participate in. Yep. I can't Tons imagine when people say, I, I just don't know what to do. <laughs> and I'm like, really? All you have to do is just look at the paper or, or go, look, to Facebook. Go, go to Facebook look at and your look events at events page. Because there are in, incredible things. And you know, kudos to you for bringing those to, to the limelight too, Tara. Because, oh, I loved it. I had so much fun. But it, but it was good to have uh, somebody who had that ability, that audience. <clears throat> Um, phenomenal speaking voice as you do. I tried so hard. There were times where I lost my voice, and my, yeah, hus was my husband was thrilled about that. That but, was tough. But those were those were you know those were some of the lean <laughs> lean days. But it was important for us to get the message out, and that was the way we wanted to do it. We wouldn't just we just didn't want to sit back and think you know we've got this corner or this piece or this area, and it was important for us to make an impact on that. Well, talking about service too, um, your son, who yes. we are so grateful is recovering, but became very ill when he went on, an, uh, an, is it AmeriCorps or Peace Corps? Peace Corps, he is in uh, Macedonia for yeah. two years. And I remember he was very, very sick over and the holidays. And he was doing great, and then uh, got double pneumonia and a bacterial infection. So we came off the campaign and then had the holidays, and then he got in the hospital, and so, it, in it Macedonia, nonetheless. In Macedonia. You were terrified. You know, it's my baby. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know he's 22 and you're going to make fun of me. But, no, but we're not. he is my baby and so is my, you know, I have a daughter, we have a daughter as well. And that, that brings it back home for me because family is, is number one. Right. And that has all, that has been instilled. If you're, you're not, you're not Greek if, you're, if you don't have <laughs> family first. Exactly. And, and so for, for me, it was a very difficult time and one that I, really had to rely on people like you and and others to say okay have faith that things will get better right and absolutely. luckily we had an extraordinary team of medical people who looked after him and you know the Peace Corps was right on top of it and yeah so we're he's doing much better thank you thank you for all the prayers well and I remember support. I remember uh, you and I spoke when I when I found out that the that your son was sick and you had a big concern because the Peace Corps was telling you don't come don't come right how a mother cannot go when their child is sick and and just say get out of my way you well, know I'm coming and I called the State Department I'm sure you did <laughs> because I'm a Greek mom yes but, but also I'm a mother and mothers out there understand that and, and especially you know having been a single parent too maybe I do have a little bit more heightened sense Absolutely. of you know concern um, but this you know it was it was not suggested that I that I come, <laughs> yeah, and, to say the least. And, to say the least, yeah. and and um, that was hard. That was really hard to sort of let go. And I'm sure every parent has come to that realization of okay, they're at a stage in their life they have to do it. Plus, we there was there were also logistical issues. Sure, getting there. There was a 30-hour flight. You know, finding a flight there in time to get there and. Uh, visas to get to the country and blah 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 so there were there were other limitations but when you know a nurse at the State Department uh, said to me you know we really think it would be best if you don't come I like literally fell through the phone I yeah. was like hello <laughs> are you kidding me are you me? crazy yeah um, but I 
bit my tongue, and it was a lesson in humility, and uh, just had faith that. But they other said people. they would take care of him, and they did. They, they did. did absolutely. I'm glad to hear that. Extraordinary, or I would have, <laughs> I would have been on a UPS jump seat. Or well, whatever, and I, and I can only imagine. You know, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share a story with you, and you'll appreciate this too. When I was, gosh, it had to be in the maybe 1999, 2000 range. Um, former Metro Council President Jim King and his beautiful wife Debbie had invited my friend and me to go to the Derby, right. which was so exciting and right. so much fun. And you know, we rarely, if ever, went to Derby because I worked it all the time. So it was like, <laughs> what's the point, you know? And so we went to the track and my mother called and said, you know, you're, we don't want you to worry, but your father's had a heart attack. And I'm oh like, God. oh my God, yeah, how am I not right? supposed to worry? I'll just bet on the horses. Exactly. Yeah. And so I immediately was like, I've got to get to Atlanta. I've got to get to Atlanta. There was no way to get to Atlanta. If right. I had driven to Atlanta, Absolutely. I could have gotten there. But even getting out of town on Derby morning no way. was going to be a challenge. And, you know, and Jim King said to me, if we have to charter a plane to get you to Atlanta, We'll do that. That's the kind of friend that guy Absolutely. was. Absolutely. And a great fortunately, family. he did not have to do that because they had gotten him into the hospital. They did stable. an angioplasty. He was stable. And the next morning, I was able to get on a plane at, in Cincinnati, mind you. Sunday morning, I had to drive to Cincinnati to get to Atlanta. But, you know, that, that's a terrifying feeling when someone you love is ill or far away and you can't get to them. Yes, I felt very, very helpless. But, you know, thankfully, I have, again, an enormous support system of friends and family and and you know my son seemed to be cognizant of the situation which which as a 22 year old yeah sometimes he's not always sure cognizant. like he told us he had a hundred and you know a hundred degree fever when he really had 105 and oh, so that wow. was when I was like what you know yeah and, that's bad so go to Macedonia for fun we are going we're yes. going hopefully in June good and he'll have some time off um, they allow him to you know, go outside that perimeter, yeah. and um, so we're proud of him. Really proud of him. So his sister and and uh, Hunter and I will will be going there and smothering him with love. And, Absolutely. You know, all sorts of different things. So yeah. So uh, you know, getting to um, and hi, Lynn Stetson. Glad that you're tuned in. Good hi, to see Lynn. you. Hi, Lynn. Love Lynn. She absolutely She's be yes, wonderful. beautiful person too. Um, and Fran says enjoyed the interview. Well, it's not over yet, Fran. <laughs> for the love of God. Fran, stay with us. Fran. Aldi says hi. Love the space. Interesting topic. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your experiences. Glad to see you, Leslie, Ed, Wendy, Loveless, Linda, Hera, Killenbrand, Roy Mullins, Suzanne Young. Um, Alan Miller says great guests. I love that. Thank you guys. Thank so God glad somebody that called in. <laughs> Thank God that you're all tuned in. Um, okay, so when we get to, and, and we're kind of skipping around, but this is kind of good because we're going to go a little would, backwards. You knew that's what happened. We knew this would right? happen. Right, I mean, this is, this uh, we is are our at the We are at KMAC, not the KMAC. Not the KMAC. We are at KMAC. You're not on the line. You're Emily online. set this up because she's on the board of KMAC, which is a really K cool KMAC place. KMAC Couture. KMAC Couture. And they're setting up this new art display, yes. and that's why we're here in the midst of the activity, and I love it. And Emily wanted me to move the ladder, but I liked it. And since I'm producing the show, I got to keep the ladder. <laughs> but the idea here is to let you know such beautiful things, wonderful things go on in downtown Louisville. And that we're between, is it between 6th and 7th? Yes. Yeah, on, on Main Street, which is where all the fun stuff it, is it, happening. It is. And if you haven't come by, please do. It is, it is wonderful. And there's lots of things for kids to do, too. Yes. If you go on their website, there's plenty of little art things for them to do. And it's, we're so fortunate in this community to have such an amazing arts community. And so. we're going to try to write our names on this wall, which I'll show yes. you in just a minute. Uh, Laura Lee and Brown and Steve Wilson are this big. <laughs> And we're, then Mary and Bill Stone are we'll this big. We'll just put our initials. We'll David and Marley and Grissom are we'll this big. And I think it's the size of the donation Correct. depends upon the size of the signature. So mine will be like mine a will be a pen yes. dot. Yes. <laughs> so after the campaign, I am broke. It's true, beautiful. So, so we, yeah. we go back to this question too. Oh. It is not even funny <laughs> how much money people have to spend to get elected to office. So let's talk about the process. When you think, okay, how many mortgages can I have on my home? <laughs> well, how do you determine what you're going to spend? I, you know, that I didn't know either. Um, but again, um, someone like you know Tom and, and and other judges who were involved, you know, were Tom very McDonald's Tom McDonald and Ken Corey and, and and Mary Corey. You know, they were all very good about like sitting down with me and talking about the process. Yes. And then, you know, I did my research, too, which is, okay, this is how much television is going to cost. This is my goal. This is how much radio. This is how much. So we had, you have to have fundraisers. I mean, that's just, to me, that is the most 
distasteful part of running because you running. have to ask for money yeah. and and that just was let's see that was hard. and I, I had you luckily, on take it from Tara let me get my calculator out. I saw you at like 500 events over 15 months so okay we'll come up with a bill well, yeah so there we go. Um, it's right. expensive. It is My expensive, God, it's and I, expensive to run for office. It's expensive, and it's it, that can be that can be daunting. Yeah, it is absolutely. daunting. Not can be. It is daunting. Sure. Um, but that is the system we have in place, and so who am I to question that? <laughs> um, but yeah, it, again, though, it didn't it didn't prevent someone like me from from trying to run. So. I knew what was in front of us, and, and we knew what, what our goal was, and we did a hell of a job. You did. Um, and my campaign team, I mean, massive amounts of volunteers. Yes. I mean, I was so blessed because, again, you stand on the shoulders of so many, particularly when you go through running for a political office. And I remember Congressman Yarmouth and Mayor Fisher, who I saw many, many times on the campaign trail. Um, commented about how extraordinary my campaign yeah. groups were because yep. we had, you know, 20, 25, 30 people wearing yellow t-shirts, moving through crowds, and it was a Borg. <laughs> it was a Degenus Borg. It was a clan. <laughs> um, so it was just, that was humbling. And, um, and I, you know, I, I'll be making baklava and food for the rest of my life yes. to pay those people back. Yes, you will. I'm waiting kind. for mine. <laughs> I'm here, my presence for Didn't you. Didn't your so. mother say that she was going to teach me how to do something? So, so yes, Make we're going to do baklava. Oh, cool. Which is a dessert. I'm such a good cook, too. And, and you know, Lisa <laughs> Siebert and Christy Jarbo and Sarah Provencher want me to Love host this. Lisa and so Siebert. I'm just need, knocking stuff over. Yes, Sorry. That's, that's okay. okay. That's because Aldi didn't want Aldi plastic. didn't want us to show this plastic, plastic bottle, bottle that I brought. That, but right. you know what? I don't have any choice because I have to stop on the way to places to, you know, <laughs> stop in at the first and, and main you gas station there. Right, I me, was, but I'm okay now. Sweetie. I'm learning to drink water. <laughs> this is important. Would you may I pour you? Sure, water. Please, thank you. It, it was no, I didn't drink You didn't drink it. from no. it. No, that's good. God only knows. Care. I mean, I've been I mean, sick as a dog with this bronchitis. You have. Thank God you're better. But I'm back. You are back. I'm back. I'm better than ever. It had to have been depressing <laughs> to lose a race by less than 2,000 votes and fewer than 2,000 No, votes. I think it was 2,000 whatever. Something. Something. Well, yeah. let's say somewhere in the meantime. And you, you lost uh, a, a, ju a judicial race um, that was already occupied, a sitting judge. You were comp you were uh, running against Derwin Webb. Hi, Derwin. Nice Hi, to Derwin. see you. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to go up against someone whose name is already known. Of course, he played basketball, and he's, he's an esteemed uh, lawyer and judge. And you had come, literally, as we said, you were coming from nowhere. You had not had a lot of exposure. Uh, your name was unusual. We yeah, made we it made was a, butchered. We yes. made a fun uh, <laughs> allusion to that with Ellen DeGeneres and De and those Emily were DeGeneres. those were all real people off the street. Yeah, who had trouble, and and it was hysterical. it was wonderful. But you know, yes. But here's the thing. I you know became friends with so many people on the campaign yes. trail. I, I can't imagine. That one would hold any animosity against somebody, even if you, even if you're not successful in your right. campaign. Right. Were there people that during the campaign, you know, did some very, un, you know, unsavory things? Yeah. Um, but I didn't let that deviate my plan of going forward. And, you know, I have I have respect for Derwin, and he was very nice to me. I was nice to him. I mean, he was ten feet tall. I mean, I was afraid he'd crush me. But, <laughs> but um, well, I had you both on the on and he, but, the and judges still, panel, and, and you did a great you job. Know, I went up and hugged him after afterwards, and I think hugged was, him around the waist. Yeah, right. Because yeah. <laughs> he's got on a ladder. Huge, and I was exactly. like, Hi, that's why we have that's the ladder. That's why we have the, the Derwin. In case ladder. Derwin there comes in, so you can give him a hug. Um, and I remember cute little Tracy Davis was like, I can't, I, I'm just taken aback by that. I'm like, why? Number one, life is way too short to get hung up on that. On I mean, being a competitor. Right. And also, I mean, yes, is it disappointing? Yes, but it's not, you know, again, my son was horribly sick. Yeah. I mean, he was Puts things very, in very, put, a lot of things put, are put into perspective. Yep. And so for me, I, I again, a, a good friend said it very well, and I'll, I'll adapt that saying. It was not what I lost, but what I gained, which was yes. an enormous amount of people who supported me. 
and will continue to support me. Right. And who I met through the campaign. That's right. Like that me. I probably knew, <laughs> but I wouldn't have otherwise had the privilege exactly. of doing that. Exactly. I mean, the union folks. I mean, hi to my union families who are amazing people who are salt <clears throat> of the earth and you know, want what we all want in life, which is a good wage, a good way to be able to raise our children in a safe community, have family, have support, a safe place to rest your head. So I loved that. Yeah. That was, that, I, I love that. And I still have friends and people that come up to me and say, I voted for you or, That's you know. That's nice. That's what know, somebody, Maria I, Rodriguez just said that. Yeah, and Mark I think. Pfeiffer uh, loves you, Aldi Milliken, Sherry Davis, Shannon Faber. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Good Hi, to see Shannon. you. Shannon's one of my favorite attorneys. She comes on and she does stuff about bankruptcy, and I'll, she answers any question that I have, even She's fabulous. even if it's something that you know I completely pull out of the air. <laughs> she says that's not my specialty, <laughs> but I'll tell you who can answer the question. Right. Yes. So is it is it um, heart wrenching? I, I guess the the point was, you know, I, I was I was very I was just grateful to run and I was grateful that we had the opportunity and honestly I didn't think I'd get to votes. Well I mean, I mean seriously it was, I, you know it was just two hundred thousand votes. I think it was more than two I think it was two hundred and twenty thousand votes. Anyway, so a couple it was thousand so votes shy. Wonderful, you yeah. know I mean that was just awe inspiring. I think it's huge. The only time I was heartbroken for um, that I felt like I let people down when I didn't win, right? Because they were so vested, as I was, but vested to the you point were, where you they were, were just. I was just kind you of were like consoling people. I was consoling because I ran around to all the like, different. They were parties. like, "What is wrong with you?" And I'm like, "Okay, maybe because it hadn't hit me or right. whatever." But it was. <laughs> they were so worried about you know right. like me, and honestly, I was I was grateful it was over too yeah. I guess because it is you guys it is were exhausted. arduous it is for 15 especially months especially the so women who were wearing heels throughout this entire <laughs> campaign that is enough to break your legs and kill well, you well I had a whole bastion of shoes in the back seat uh, so my you car. could swap so I would swap out I'd wear low heels or as my daughter calls them Frankenstein shoes or whatever <laughs> and then I'd change in the heels and you know it because you're, you, my whole, the, the whole campaign, I lived out of my car in a lot yeah, of ways. Sure. You know, I would, and God bless my family and friends and Hunter in particular and my kids who would be like, are we going to eat dinner ever yeah. together? And I'd be like, well, I'll be home about me 10 o'clock. <laughs> Click clock. Yeah. So enjoy. So, <laughs> right. I'm like, European style. So like the pizza guy knew us. But of course. He was like, is Emily out again tonight? <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you right now, I went around to, I think I hit almost every election night party yes. of the judges that I had on my shows. And I was very grateful to be able to do that. And there were some winning parties and there were some <laughs> parties that were really awesome even if they didn't come out on top. Mine was that. Yours was one of them. <laughs> and I got to stop by Tracy's party, which oh, was Tracy really would have cool. been fabulous. And I stopped at Daryl's party and then of course Christina and, and Judge Lauren Adams Ogden. A, Hi, Judge Ogden. Yeah, and a and bunch Judge of Harvey. a bunch of people, and I love I had a blast with them as well. Well, and you know the thing that I think is cool is that you guys all obviously you obviously have seen each other as attorneys all your careers, and, and, and then you've appeared in front of each other and when they've been elevated and to judgeships. And they're human judgeships. beings, you know. Yep. I mean, it's like I I don't look at them necessarily any differently. Um, I mean, yes, they're judges. And I'm not diminishing that, but again, you know, I have no animosity whatsoever to those who who won, um, or, or you know, snickering at people who lost, um, because it's that's just not how I perceived it. You know, I was more heartbroken for the people who were so vested in my campaign, um, like my my husband. <laughs> God love Hunter. God he love did you. such a good job Hunter too. Hunter did such a great, and he was. Tracy Davis and other people were like, I need a hunter because he, <laughs> yeah. you know, he was my wingman. And um, sometimes he would drive so that I could prepare for the speeches and, you know, or he would meet me there. And, you know, sometimes we were out till 10 o'clock at night. Absolutely. And so <clears throat> he sacrificed quite a bit. Everybody did though. So, yeah. and everybody in every campaign, you have to sacrifice in order to if you want to be, if you want to be successful, and that doesn't necessarily mean winning. I mean right. successful in getting your message across, having impetus to keep moving. And I think the beauty of 
my campaign, because I can only speak to mine, was we galvanized a large group of people yes, from did. every walk yep, of life. You sure did. And every corner of the city, and that was that was fabulous. That's another thing that's interesting about the judicial races is that you're not carved into little districts. Right. You're right. not in a it's specific neighborhood. Right. It's the entire county of Jefferson, which is extraordinary. And, and, and huge. And I mean, diverse. Diverse. And Holy there were places smoke. that I would drive and think, I've got to be in Indiana by this point, or I've got to be, <laughs> I've got to be in, Ohio. in Ohio. This and is yet a long it was still Jefferson away. County. And yeah. that blew my mind yeah. so again it was kind of like this is really cool I it didn't is. know they had this beautiful park out here I didn't you know whatever and then you would talk to people in a cafe or a little deli and you know that ask you about now when they would ask me about my name and I'd say it I'd have to say it two three four times and finally they're like we'll just call you Ellen and I'm like I think we're gonna make a commercial about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great commercial too I love it. We've got to, I'm going to, I'm going to find that and put it on my page so you guys know what we're talking about because it was really an adorable commercial and it brought you some name recognition too. Well, yeah, a name recognition. And I also, I think it just also encapsulated a lot about, yes. um, you know, you can't take life seriously and it was fun and you have a good sense of and humor. You <laughs> See, Hunter, I do. I have a good she sense She really of humor. does. And you know, your um, imitation of your mother is the oh best. Oh God. I do, I, you know, and she gets very upset about that. When you imitate her? Oh, God, yes. Really? You know, here's a woman who is a professor, a college professor. She's brilliant. Has several degrees, yeah. you know, speaks five languages fluently. Oh, my God, she's amazing. You know, she just, whatever she touches grows, yeah. you know, like I can't even, I, a cactus dies, you know, <laughs> in my house. And she's always like, if you don't give it love, <laughs> how do you expect it to grow? And I'm like... I don't know. I don't have time. You know. <laughs> or my favorite, you know, she has this amazing garden, right? Does I mean, it's she? just like the Shangri-La of gardens. And she should be on the garden tour, but she's wow. so modest that she... And here's mine. I have, like, weeds popping up and dandelions. It's dead grass. And she's like, I am so disappointed. <laughs> In your green Okay, thumb. Mom, but I'm only running for judge. That's not <laughs> I'll get on those dandelions. I have an active campaign, Mom. Yeah, that's good. Oh, so you're going to have to work on the dandelions very yeah. soon. Yeah, so when I do imitate her, it's she's, with her response is, when you can speak five languages. <laughs> oh. So she gives it back. She, she does she's give a, it back. She's, she's a strong woman. Kim yes. Kelly and Judy Young-Royce are watching. Welcome to both of you. We're glad to have you guys with us this afternoon on Take It From Tara with Emily DeGenis. We are at KMAC, and the reason why is because she is a huge part of this gigantic fashion show that's going to be coming up in April as a board member for KMAC Couture. And they're setting up a new art display here in KMAC, which is between 6th and 7th on Main Street. Um, Aldi Milliken and Curtis Conlon. Conlon were two wonderful guys who came and sat down with us, and, and they basically run this place and told us a little bit about what, and Michelle what the event. And Michelle yeah, Stagg. Yeah, lots of, of people. A ton of people. And, and this event's taking place, uh, he said April, April 26th. 20th. April 20th. 20th. Okay. April 20th, it's so Saturday. So it's a couple weeks before Derby. Yes, and after, I think it's after Thunder, yes. Yes, and it uh, will be very moved. exciting. And tickets are available, I'm sure, online. Online, mm -hmm. online. KMAC, uh, Couture, but you can go to KMAC and then pull down and see the, um, the runway show. That'll be fun. And it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful display of art and creativity and how, I mean, people make uh, gowns out of pressed orange peels. Cool. You know, and you're like, what? And it looks, it looks like, you know, haute couture. So I gotta it's tell just, you this. In 1990, let's see, 1980. You would appreciate it as a former, you know, pageant person because it is a show that, you know, every piece of it is choreographed cool. and, you know, and loved over and poured over and, you know, Curtis is, partner Chris Welsh who's an amazing designer he does the, the, the step and repeat and you know I mean it's just such a, a, a labor of love in about 1986 I was starting um, around filling in I was <laughs> that's okay I'm used to it I was filling in um, on wave TV on the morning show and a woman named Zephra May whose daughter was also Zephra May came on to demonstrate the garbage bag dresses that she'd made and she took black plastic right what 50 gallon garbage bag which is coming back in fashion in Paris I'm telling you what and she wove these these plastic garbage bags into the most amazing amazing I don't know whether the woman is still alive or not this has been a long time ago her daughter probably is um, but it was really cool and it was like that was the first time I was exposed to something 
that was so creative and so clever. And this place is full of that. So if you yes. haven't come down to it's KMAC, fabulous. it's officially, it's closed today. Where you can't come down right now. Right. We got in because I know people. That's but, right. you know, we got in here to, to do the show, but they it's, it's open every day. And Chris Welsh says, thanks for the couture love, Emily. I love you, Chris Welsh. Tracy Sprouls is watching. She's the mother of the miniature therapy horses, whom I love so I much. I love, I love Tracy's a therapy, wonderful yes. friend as well as a great supporter of Take It From Tara. We always see her tuning in. And she's a great dental hygienist. <laughs> Most people know her as a dental hygienist. They're like, well, don't we know you? Oh, yeah, you're the one who's inside my mouth all the time with sharp instruments. But anyway, I love, I love those introductions. I know they're great. How are you going to do mine? Like when I'm uh, well, long I'm, gone. I've been thinking about that, actually. <laughs> let me show you. Let me show well, you. Some what expletives. I, this is okay. really funny because what I did put on your. Oh, Lord. It, it says, Emily DeGenis is the woman who ran for judge. <laughs> Although she barely missed the win, she triumphed in more ways than you can ever imagine. That was sweet. Isn't that nice? Very. It took me a while I'll to come you. up with something nice, but I managed to do it somehow. I was gonna it say, was tough, but was I like, did it. How do I do this without getting in trouble? So what I and I put an extra and in there, but I'll fix it later. So anyway, um, my mother will correct you. The reason I know she will. She's such a grandma. Five languages. Oh there. yeah, for sure. I know. I had an English teacher for mother. Don't forget. So I remember those things. <laughs> I was typing quickly at the beginning of the show. We forgive you. The reason that we um, asked Emily to come on the show today is because um, I was at many, many events where Emily's campaign was set up with the massive yellow and blue Borg-like Emily DeGenis support team campaigning. And it was quite fascinating, and I watched the campaign, and you know, I'll, I'll give you an analogy since you outed me for being in the pageants. I'm sorry. In the Miss America program, yes. um, you know, you have your picture I, taken. I, I'm revering you on Thank that. You. I'm not I outing you. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> I've already been outed by so many things. Anyway, so, <laughs> sorry, couldn't resist. That's for a different podcast. Um, yes, a different podcast. So in the pageants, um, sometimes photographers will pick a contestant to follow through Oh, the whole process. So one year I was in the Miss Oregon pageant and I was very lucky that this lovely man, whose name I will never forget, it was Melvin Lawrence, chose me at the local level and followed me through the state level and was hoping, of course, to get a trip to Atlantic City out of it. Missed it by that much. Missed it by that Talk much. Talk about that. Yeah, right. Don, Don Adams <laughs> missed it by that much. So he took photos of me throughout the entire process. That's amazing. They are some of the most beautiful photos that anyone it's a good ever canvas. took. Well, You're God a good love canvas. him. No, I mean, seriously, this guy was so artistic. That's fabulous. And so incredible. And I, and I think, you know, that was so amazing. But that's that vested thing that you were talking about just a right. few minutes ago. All the people who support you when you're running, you know, in a pageant, you've got to have a, a it takes a village. It people laugh and village. they make fun. That, right. that thing paid my way through college. Right. I got right. a political science degree because of the Miss America pageant. And I'm very, very grateful for the fact that I was able to, you know, practice my piano, practice my vocals, you know, work out like a maniac to look good in a swimsuit, and learn to walk. How do you feel of now, picking though, my way through the fields? I think it was. I think it's amazing. But how, how do you feel now that they're taking away the swimsuit? You I'm know, turn the tables. I'm tar to basket. You can you can interview me. I'm totally fine with, with either way. First of all, Heather French Henry's on the board of Miss America, the advisory board, and I think she's got it together and I think she knows what she's doing and whatever she decides to do Will I work. am going to get on board support. and yeah. support her because I adore her um, and I think that maybe it's moved into that time right that we right. need to focus more on the fitness and I'll tell you America's Junior Miss is always focused on fitness they always had a shorts and t-shirt routine oh, as, as opposed, opposed to, to a the swimsuit, swimsuit because it was it was 16 and 17 right. year old girls and well of course now it doesn't matter now you're four and you're in a swimsuit but right in the Miss America program, they have decided that they were going to do kind of a fitness-oriented thing, and I think that's fine. You know, the key has been putting more emphasis back on talent, right? Because that's all you do all year long. And, you perform, and public service, and you speak, right. and you have a platform, and a platform. So your ability to interview and your ability to perform, entertain at, at state pageants around the country and other events um, are, are very, very important. And Absolutely. that's why I just respect so much the change that has taken place. And the, the bringing the pageant up into this century, having Vanessa Williams on as a judge was to me the greatest vindication Amazing. in the world. Absolutely. Because I worship the ground that she walks on. Stunning. And, uh, and she got a really crappy deal years and years, and years ago. And I mean, I just was like, so anyway, so all that's, that said, all that's, back to yes, that vested because you interest. Because never associate beauty pageants with Emily DeGenis. <laughs> Back half to the time, half the time, my hair was, 
I mean, in the wind and the rain, and you know, I. I you I, always looked fabulous. Whatever you did, I you mean, always looked kind of scary. And you look fabulous today. Scary. My hair is driving me crazy today. Something it feels I like something's tickling my forehead. I don't it looks know what great. It is. I don't. Um, and notice everybody's left. <laughs> we're here by ourselves now. I think we're locked in. We're at KMAC, and we've got about <clears> ten minutes to to finish this wonderful conversation. But I wanted to just I wanted to. I wanted to pay a little bit of honor to um, the women, the woman who ran. And I think that one of the things that is so impressive is that we all watch politics. Yes. We're very, very, you and I are very, very involved and active on a visceral level right. with what's going on in our country right now. And no matter who uh, is, is in the position of power, um, you know, we, we want to be able to get behind those people. We want to be able to relate to them. And, and the women who ran in this particular case in our city and the judicial races had such connectivity. Yes. And you made an impact with a lot of different people. And people got to feel as though they knew you. Oh, yes. And even if they didn't know <laughs> I'm you. I'm an open book. Yeah, you are. And, well, we're both um, that way. Um, yes. And that was, that was wonderful. <coughs> that, was, that was a highlight of the campaign, which is that having that relatability and ability to connect to people yes. that felt very natural to me yeah. I was I, I you know that was great um, but I, I have to say a shout out to all the women that ran in this campaign I became good friends with yes and um, hopefully they're still speaking to me I did too but but and they will and so be. there was a, a relatability factor we all sort of it was a, a camaraderie um, and I think that was what was so exciting about this particular time to see so many women, you know, rally around um, one another, Each other. and and say, you know, run, run yeah. for office. Yep. You know, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. So put yourself out there. Well, and, and I and I have to tell you that there was one woman in particular who actually got up and said, not this past year, but the year before run for office no matter what it is that you do and that was Sadiqa Reynolds who has been you know in a in a position of prominence now as with the Urban League she said if you are a woman get out and run and you have to be able to understand the importance of doing that because we have been I, I got a button I years ago I remember her women's, comments a little differently the woman's whatever. place is in the house <laughs> not in the Senate I mean, that woman's place is in the House and in the Senate. Right. And I love that because when I was 16 and I went to Washington, D.C., I was at Girls' Nation, and to find a button that said a woman's place is in the House and in the Senate is what inspired me. So the women leaders in this community who have been judges, who have been politicians, who have you know, gone to the greatest extent possible to be leaders and to show people how to do the things that you know, we need to do as women to participate in government, um, we appreciate all of you and every single person who I was had. I was very grateful to have the opportunity to interview all of you on my shows last year, the spring and the fall. Lauren and Christina and Lisa and Lori and Tracy. I keep saying Tracy, 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 because you and Tracy and I had fun at that launch party for for The Voice. Oh yes, that yes, was that crazy. Was funny. We got our pictures that in The was, Voice, as a matter of fact. Did we really? I yeah, we know. did. It was oh, really cool. Good. But Tracy. Um, Davis is, is an extraordinary example of a young woman who has worked in a capacity that most people don't appreciate and don't understand, working for justice for a, a very uh, marginalized part of the population. Absolutely. And, and she's a single mom. And she's a single mom. Um, working full time. Yes, working full time. And, you know, her story really touched me as well. Um, even though I, you know, and I adored Christina Garvey as well. I mean, her her father was, is is a dear friend, uh, but Tracy's story was so impactful because here she was, a person who was living here and driving up to Northern Kentucky every single day, back and forth, right. to go to law school. Right. I mean, what do I have Think to about complain that. about? Right. So, you know, I took a little piece from every single person who ran. Yes. Um, you know, her opponent, Christina Garvey, people thought were, you know, too young, but she was such a lovely person and, uh, and, and carried on a legacy, which, which, is, a huge, which is a huge owner yes. sometimes yes. that you want to live up to your father, your mother's, you know, legacy. Yep. And then, you know, Tracy is hysterical as always. And then, um, you know, Lauren Ogden, um, who, you know, her daughter went through so much. Yes. Um, and uh, Lisa Langford, I did not have the opportunity to know very well, but I got to know her on the campaign. I like her a lot. Just the sweetest, like, yep. 
warm person, you know, and Lori, I mean, yeah. you know, I could go on and on and on, but we became friends. Um, so call me. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. That's uh, what I love, though. And I, I, mean, I, like, I like that part, because there was camaraderie, and, and honestly, I do have a newfound respect for people who do run for absolutely. office. Absolutely. Um, I think everybody should exercise that. Mayor Fisher said that to me. He said everybody should understand that um, it, it, it is it is a sacrifice, but it is, it is something that, that everybody should probably do in their lifetime so that you do have profound respect for yep. one another and the, the input that you want to do, you know, to make a difference, to make a change, the only way to do that is sometimes run for office, you know. Um, but there are other ways you can do that too. But, so here's but yeah. the other way that I want to know. Oh Lord. What is, uh, what is coming up on your radar? Because I know that you've said to me, you're, <laughs> you're assessing a lot of options. Yes. You're still a lawyer. Nobody took away your law degree. <laughs> this is a good thing. You still have a wonderful family. Let's yes. flip those. You still have a wonderful family and you're still a lawyer. Yes. You got some awesome biceps here. Thank this you. Is good. Working I'm on working that. Out. Yeah. Um, I'm getting back into shape. You also still are involved in a million different things and you're showing you were at Lobster Feast squirting your husband across the room with I know. lobster juice, which Actress was disgusting. Theater. Love him. Uh, but you and you're doing this KMAC couture and you're you're back into the practice of law, I would imagine. Yes. yes. So what do you see on your radar? <laughs> coming up here in the next few years and you can broadcast out as far as you want to but what is it that interests you and is another oh run Lord. for office possibly in the offing because honest to god you know you've gained all of this name recognition jason ashley gardner just tuned in hey jason runs under dr francis weinstock thank you guys so much i you know that is the i guess the 20 million dollar question and yeah. and i'm taking some time to reflect on that yes. uh, because again I am a very intentional person. I don't do things haphazardly. It's just not the way that I, I think. Um, and, and in order to be behind something, I really have to have it in my heart. Right. So, um, you know, I don't know. But I am in talks with a lot of different people who have reached out because, yes, I did get name recognition and who, who have really come out and said, you know, this is what I think you should do or would you be interested in that? And that has been fabulous. Um, do I have an answer for you encapsulated with this is what I'm going to do? No, because... Kamala Harris, Emily DeGenis. <laughs> it kind of rhymes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Because, <laughs> because I think what's important right now for me, the present, is to sort of reconnect with so many dear friends that um, had to People that you take it back. And I abused, threw in a yes, lot. Yeah, yes. Didn't pay any attention didn't to. Didn't pay any attention to. And, I, and also, you know, <laughs> cook a home-cooked meal for my family. Yes, finally. that would be nice. That would be send nice. Send the pizza and clean guy out. away. Yeah, send the pizza guy Jason, away. Jason, the pizza guy, you and don't have to come Just tonight. kind of nest back, because yeah. when you're on the road as much as I was yeah. for 15 months, it's exhausting. there's not a lot of time you have to give to your friends who like their gardens to right. me, you know, my right. friends are everything. Oh God, don't compare them to a garden. You're a garden. Your mother will know well, that's true. that your garden a is lot a of desolate right. <laughs> desert in the middle of your backyard. She okay. didn't mean that. Maybe it wasn't a garden. She's gonna <laughs> Maybe it's, it's baklava. It's baklava. Baklava. Right, whatever. It's so baklava. it's a whole bunch She's of gonna stuff. She's gonna grow it. Anyway, Tara. <laughs> I need to like, you know, reinvest in that yes. and, and kind of give back to myself and, uh, and to my husband and, and uh, my family nice. and, and, you know, just kind of reevaluate uh, my options um, because that's the beauty of, of this. There are so many options available. So You know what you could do to start it out? Come oh, with Lord. me to Flying Axes. I think I would pull out a shoulder. And throw an axe. It is the I, most... I eviscerated lobsters. It, I, well, that's good, too. But this is the <laughs> most satisfying kerfunk. I'd be afraid I'd miss and then ricochet it's off. It's okay. And it would, they teach you how to deal with that. And it would hit me. Yeah, and, you well, know, whatever. Yeah, they're going to take care of you. Don't worry. But it's okay. a, Yeah, come and throw some axes at if flying axes. you invite axes. me, I will do that. How if, about, it's Caroline, fun. not... An, uh, and, and I and you will go Caroline flying. is the one who got me and, flying and I saw that. And flying... <laughs> fly, awesome. Flying axes. So we have... Uh, hi, Ellen Jones. Glad to see you tuned in at the last minute. You're going to have to watch the rerun after the fact. <laughs> but um, I just really appreciate all of you guys who have, uh, who have joined us today and who have stayed with us through this fascinating interview into the mind of Emily DeGenis. 
Oh, God. oh that, you're good. That's that, why we set up here in the midst. That's kind of scary. You, have, you can walk don't, right into the come shop. Come on in here. Christina is one of the wonderful come people here. on KMAT Couture. Yeah, we're on the air. Come on. We've got a minute left. Come here. Come here. You've walked oh, through yeah. the shot 50 <laughs> times. She didn't know we were on the air. You. She's like, I've been working. Who are you? She's photographing the art for K-Mac Couture. She artist. won't come artist. on camera. Artist. The artist. What's your name? Christina Carter. And I'm on the Christina board. Carter. Yes. She's famous. Christina's on the board with me. And I awesome. Love okay. So now we know. This so is I love cool. everybody. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Glad that you came and photographed. You can photograph us if you wish. Yeah. We're not artists. Oh, She's like, back. no. Yeah. She's already packed She'll up. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Like, sure, yeah. She'll, right. She'll come She'll back. She'll come back again. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, hi, Amber Clark from the main event. So we're gonna. That's another thing. You and I are gonna go to the, the main event and have some fun. We'll get Davis to go with us because the main event is this great, big, gigantic, humongous entertainment center out on Blankenbaker. And you've okay. seen it. And it's got games and bowling and ropes courses and, and who, laser who are we going with? So I know. Tracy Davis is going to go. Oh, Davis. Okay. Yeah. I thought you said JP. Um, <laughs> Michelle James. Hi, ladies. Hi, Michelle. So Hi, hard Michelle. To and Ellen says, oh, my God, met someone who must connect with KMAC Works at Gucci. Well, hello. Yeah. Anybody Good that idea. works with Gucci, I'd like to know. Yeah. Well, Ellen will definitely. <laughs> Do I get you. free Gucci stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So Michelle, say hi to David. Um, you know, it's funny. David and I love the main event. Good, Michelle. So we're going to go out there and do a live cast, too. I'd you love can come that. with if you want to. That'll be fun. Am I going to be on another live cast? You oh, can good. be on any live cast Dang, you want because you awesome. are so much fun. And All today, right. you've been very serious for the most part. I know. A so, lot of times you're very so funny. So next time, well, you know, I was trying to be um, esteemed ex, you know, political Whatever. candidate. <laughs> Next time we'll get the real story <laughs> on Emily DeGeneres, otherwise known as Emily DeGeneres. I love it. Or you are generous. So You're very generous. No, thank and, you. you are and I have to thank it. you very much for uh, it, taking an orphan in at Thanksgiving. Oh my God! You know, because when you lose she your was you awesome. lose your last parent, and you're suddenly <laughs> an orphan, and you don't have any family in the area. I was. We were so happy you came, and you were so kind. We were afraid you were could be like, okay. I was invited. one of seven hundred people <laughs> in this house, and they she had time for me. She was such a trooper. Too. It was fun. She Libby was Parkinson says, "Fun show." Jason Orthover is watching. Good to see you guys. Um, we're gonna we're gonna leave you now with this thought. Um, do we Emily? do a song and dance show? Yes, we can do a song oh, and dance. I'd what would you like to do? Those are like some not good signs. I don't know how to do this. No, it's like I don't oh, know. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, what about this one? Yeah, okay. that's a bad one, right? <laughs> my mother. My mother my is mom, watching. We want to thank. We want to thank your <laughs> no mother. No open hand for either. For bringing that's you a bad thing, into this world. Yes, and my dad. Thank you. She and didn't do it alone. No, she didn't do it alone. But I swear. God, that there. woman holds your family together. That's all I can she say. She is definitely she the glue. She is the matriarch, the Greek matriarch to be contended with. A hundred percent. My my. Everybody knows it too. But so everybody we, loves her. We want to wish so. her luck on her next surgery tomorrow. Yes, thank and when you. you feel like having a visitor, I'll come and visit you. Yeah, Not she's the first coming. Day. And you know what we should do what? is do a podcast live on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, that would be with fun. a Greek family. And my well, let's not wait adorable in-laws. Let's not wait till Thanksgiving. Nan and Buddy Sadek, who I adore. Yeah. And that amalgamation of all these friends and family members, and how how we celebrate. How long have you guys been together, you and Hunter? A long time. Because you know he used to Too live long. across the uh, street. Fourteen from me. years, I think, right? Yeah, he lived across the street from me in like 1994. I never or remember. It's sad. And I knew him then, and I think it's so funny that it took you and me all those years, twenty something years, it to was. meet. And, and I, I met you at the what? The Omni. Yeah. Um, when you were doing something. Something. Mm -hmm. And then you gave me your card, and you know that was it. And, and we were off I, and running. And then I stalked her from. And that here we are, and on. she stalked me forever, and That's I will right. stalk her too. So it was great. The best Greek food ever, Michelle James says. Is that like you're talking about Emily's food? Yes. Emily doesn't cook. It's I all do about too. her mother. It's I, all about I her mother. Cook. Her mother. Just haven't cooked in 15 months. But That's all. But you're it. cooking now I'm with a vengeance. Now. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining I, us. So, Thank you. So much fun. Give me a hug. Love, love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I have to get up and, and thanks turn to that. everybody who yeah. who supported me. Give I, them a I'm, thank you while I, I turn off I the camera. I am so grateful, and I had the best time, and I'm privileged. And stay tuned. Dot dot dot. So you'll have something you. fun. Whatever. And it is. you can always I, keep up with her on my show. <laughs> That's we'll have a part two. Thanks, Emily. Thank Jess. you. Here we are at the absolutely beautiful K Mac, and there's where our signatures are going to go. As That's soon right. As we come up with a couple hundred. We're going to graffiti, graffiti to it. To donate.